so I'll get us started here with an injury update. Uh, these players will not practice. Tyler Croft uh, yesterday sustained a broken foot. Uh, he'll have surgery today. Cole Beasley will not practice. He and Mitch Morse uh, both underwent surgery a few weeks ago, and uh, they're working through getting healthy. Core muscle procedure. Uh, Russell Bodine still coming off of the soldier, shoulder surgery. Excuse me. Frank Gore, foot and ankle that was sustained last in the last season, and then David Sills uh, with the uh, he'll be limited with a hamstring sustained in rookie minicamp. Uh, Karen Johnson, Raphael Bush will be in red jerseys, and then Corey Carter, uh, Corey Bajorquez, and Matt Milano are all full up. So with that, I'll uh, open it up to your questions. That sounds like a regular season uh, disabled list there. What what happened with um, Croft? How did that happen? Yeah, just, uh, you know, we were going through our drills yesterday, and uh, we got the word after practice um, that, that he had fractured his foot. So, uh, listen, it's not ideal. You know, um, availability is key, and, uh, but we trust our, our medical staff that, uh, and, and uh, Tyler as well. He's a hardworking young man that will be back and, uh, in due time and ready to go. Is, is, what is the expectation of a, the, the timetable of a broken foot? Yeah, we, we, won't, we won't know. Uh, for sure, at this point, we've, we've got some thoughts, but uh, we're just going to let the process, it's early yet, we're going to let the process run, run its course right now. And what's the, the can you have found out the Beasley and Morse situations, what exactly those are? Yeah, just, uh, you know, they went through the, uh, that core muscle deal with the groin area, went to, uh, went to Philadelphia and saw Dr. Myers and had the procedure. This off season, and, and they're working back. They're they're hard at work, and our training staff's done a nice job with them. They've worked hard, and and uh, we'll get them back as soon as we can. Here. Coach, I know uh, it hasn't been announced by the team, but there's been a report that Jerry Hughes signed an extension. I would like to ask you though, what you see in Jerry, what you've identified in your time here from Jerry, uh, that would possibly want you guys to have him going forward. Right. You know, I knew Jerry just on film coming out of college at TCU, watched him as and his skill set as a pass rusher. Um, and then when he transitioned from the Colts to here and, and then getting to know him um, as, a, as a young man and watching him develop off the field and then watching him trying to take his game to another level. Uh, I've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed being around Jerry, his family. And, and, um, and so we're excited about that, uh, obviously. It's not signed and done yet, but we are excited about it. And Sean, just in, if you could put in perspective what Jerry just means to this <laughs> pass rush, because seven seven sacks last season wasn't an overwhelming number, even though it led the team. But if you looked at him, he was gain, consistently getting pressure. Uh, it, it, where, where his game is entering year 10, just from your perspective. Yeah, that's a fair question. You know, when you just look at the stats, and you mentioned the number seven, if you pull up the tape, you watch the tape, and, and you know that we talk about sacks versus affecting the quarterback, everyone wants the sack numbers. Just as important at times is how many times you affect the quarterback, whether it's getting him off the spot, his vision, his arm, and the way the ball comes out. Um, there were a number of those over the last couple of years since since I've been around Jerry. and and. You know we value pass rushers, so right. the ability to affect the quarterback with the front four, uh, he was a he was a big piece of that last year, and we and our goal and Jerry's goal as well is that he'll continue to grow, improve, and, and evolve. And I mean you've got to be able to get there with your front four. Sean, Sean do, you, if you, do you consider do you consider sacks <clears throat> perhaps kind of an overrated stat based on all of what you just said? It isn't all about just the sack. Is it kind of an overrated stat that we that we use? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. That's for that's for you to decide. I think so. I, you never want to take credit away from where credit's due. I mean, you look at the great sack artists over the years. And as football fans, we all watch Gastineau, Taylor, all these uh, you know guys that had the numbers. So I, I would never want to take anything away from them. But just when you study the game of how you win games, how you you, you got to you have to affect the quarterback. And and I just I think when you if a lot of interceptions, a lot of incompletions come from just getting the quarterback moved off his spot, like I've said, affecting his vision, affecting the way the trajectory of the ball, his arm, and, and, and so 
I don't know if it's an overrated stat. I don't think it's overrated because it's important that you can, you can sack the quarterback. But at the end of the day, um, at, a, at, a, at a minimum, you've got to be able to affect the quarterback in some way, shape, or form. Sean, after turning over the roster for you know, most of the past two, past two uh, seasons, how important is it to bring a you know, now to add some continuity to the roster with the Jerry Hughes, who's been with you since the beginning? And how important is, is that to you know, push forward the message of culture from somebody who's been a part of this team since you arrived? Yeah, there's there's two things that work there. So it's, it's the continuity, and it's also rewarding a young man that has done things right, and, uh, and and so you know Brandon's done a nice job of uh, balancing the checkbook uh, over the last couple of years. It's been hard, but um, it's it's necessary so that we can, um, when we feel like it's right, target our own and then and then bring them back. And and so uh, Jerry's a good football player. We're not uh, big fans of letting good football players walk out out of our room and. In our building so it's look the goal is that players that come to Buffalo and can can be in our environment every day can be a part of our culture can be in this fan base and, and experience what it's like to play in Buffalo that that they'll, that they'll become the best versions of them than they ever were before uh, here in Buffalo and that's I think you are you have already started to see some of that take place. Sean you didn't mention Matt Milano on that injury <coughs> list does that mean he's good to go and, and if so getting him back what can that mean for the defense? Yeah, continuity, again, as John mentioned, and, and you know, we've got a lot of the guys back off of our defense from a year ago. Uh, that doesn't really mean anything other than continuity. And so we've got a lot of work to do, and Matt um, is knocking some rust off, as he would say himself. And uh, yesterday was a good step in, in, uh, in the right direction in terms of him getting back in the fold and, and going uh, full go. John, how do all these injuries impact what you're trying to do this spring in terms of getting a lot of new Faces to kind of gel together. Yeah, it's, it's as I mentioned from the outset. That's the, that's a challenge. And when you talk about um, you know availability, now when we're not available, it's not ideal. Is it going to stop us? No, we're going to continue to work, and that's where uh, the trust that I have, uh, Brandon and myself, and our medical staff. Um, that's what they're here for as well. Did you give you any have pause in have terms of how you? I mean, what you would do on the field in terms of wanting to get through healthy, like maybe scaling things back or anything like that? I mean, you all, we always evaluate and um, you hate to see guys get hurt. In some cases, these guys uh, haven't been on the field and, and so and that's where free agency is, free agency, as they say. And, and so um, we've just got to continue to work and, and build a mentally and physically tough football team. And, and sometimes you're going to get some dings. Um, don't get me wrong, that's a, that's a part of it as well. So I'd rather, I'd much rather develop a, a physically and mentally tough football team, then, you know, hey, we go play golf every day and, and we're, everyone's healthy. I mean, there's a, there's a, a delicate balance there. Sean, okay. is the foot, is the foot injury, for, uh, broken foot by Crouch, same as he had last year in Cincinnati? Uh, I'm not going to get into specifics. Uh, definitely the same, same foot. Same foot, that's right. Yeah. Coach, with Morse and Bodine not available, I mean, you're already doing some shuffling there up front, I would imagine. Spencer that's getting the work at center. Well, who's working in at center? Spencer. Spencer and then and then uh, Jeremiah has been in there as well. Um, and we're it gives us an opportunity for some young guys to step up uh, and some other guys like Jeremiah who's played some center before to, to develop some position flexibility as well. Sean, you had uh, EJ Gaines your first year here, and he seemed to have a pretty good season. Left you guys. What, what made you interested in bringing him back? Well, it always takes both parties to have uh, to have that interest, mutual interest, and we were interested in him, and he was interested in coming back to us. And again, I think it goes back to um, Jay with, with what I mentioned earlier, with guys that have played for the Bills since we've been here, and, and knowing that something's different, knowing that they that they enjoyed one of the better years of their careers here, and, uh, and they go somewhere else and they say, hey, um, maybe the pasture isn't always greener. And so. I think guys like being around this place. They like playing for this fan base. Uh, they like what we're doing. And, and, and I would also say the guys in the locker room, um, they're a pretty tight-knit group. You guys added to the wide receiver room pretty substantially this offseason. What's the message for guys like Robert Foster, Zay Jones, guys who know your system have been here? In, 
in terms of? In terms of now they have to compete with, obviously, guys that you paid a lot of money to, you brought in at their positions. I mean, what, what do you yeah, say to them? What do you expect from them? Yeah, I compete. Do your job. That's what, that's what brings out the best in, in, uh, in people. You know, if, if you're wired the right way, and, and I expect that Zay and Robert are, and, and those are two young, good players, that they'll compete and step their game up and continue to develop and continue to grow and evolve. And uh, there's no depth chart this time of year. I've said that before, guys are out there and you'll see a guy with the ones, the next day's with the twos. You see a guy with the twos, the next day's with the ones. We're trying to find the right pieces as we evolve and grow and, and, and um, come to the final 53. On, on that note, Coach, uh, we all know Robert last year, um, things didn't go so well early on and he had to work his way back and he did. What did you see from him in the offseason now that he's back here? What did you see from him as far as how hard he worked and the work he put in the offseason? Yeah, he's worked hard. Uh, he's been around. Uh, on his own, most of the off season, and, and uh, again, we're starting to see some of that as well. Where guys didn't didn't stay here previous uh, to us getting here, guys are starting to stay here in the off season, like Robert, like Lorenzo, like some of the other young guys as well. So uh, that's a positive for us. Hey, Sean, we got through 15 minutes with no Josh Allen. So uh, you saw him yesterday in, in an OTA. Finally, how does what is your impression as he comes back for a year or two at a very early stage here? Yeah, first day. Um, you know, I've, I've been impressed with his uh, methodical work ethic and approach. Um, uh, seems like he understands the work that he has to and we have to do this offseason to get us to where we're trying to get to as a football team. And then offensively as well. Um, he's done a great job, as you guys know, it's been well documented, putting his arms around um, some of the players that we did sign through free agency, some of our draft picks. and. Uh, I think that's that's a great quality to have in terms of the humility that Josh that Josh possesses in his DNA and again the way he was raised and so uh, that's the first step in leadership a lot of times. Um, so I thought he had a good day yesterday and certainly more work to do uh, the rest of the week. Let's take two more, please. Sean, what's the objective for Josh <coughs> during this OTA process? Is it knocking off rust? Is it pointing in on specific things to improve upon? What what is his objective? Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's the overall, it's the overall football player. That includes the off the field person too. And you know, we're talking about a young man who's one year out of college, and it's going to continue to experience life and grow and mature off the field. And and then his leadership will continue to to develop uh, in the locker room for us. And then and then as the skills and the techniques develop, and he puts in the, the required time to do that, uh, which he has. Continue to grow on the field. Just the game, you know, just like any young player, you want the game to be able to slow down, um, so that what seemed fast last year, maybe um, six, eight months ago, will this year just slow down exponentially. And and uh, as he continues to grow and get more reps, uh, it'll continue to slow down for him. Coach, what was the decision to bring number thirty-two back after such a long time? Yeah, it's something we did talk about uh, when it was brought up. Um, by Perry, and, and uh, we know that we knew it was a number that was important to him and his family, and and so we felt like we would honor that uh, that request, and and uh, we definitely vetted it out and uh, we talked about it. What was the like reaction? Has there been a reaction to the number thirty-two being worn again? Uh, no, I would say if you ask, pull most of the players. I don't. They probably didn't even realize it, honestly. Uh, but we did talk about it uh, as a leadership group. All right.